context. <laughs> what song is that? I don't know. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> He's looking good, I can tell. He wants those Donovan Mitchell shoes. It's gonna be a good night, I can already tell. Good things are gonna happen. Just trust me on it, it's a coming. It's one of those feelings. By the way, I've been very impressed with how you always know all of the players. You can get that all down. Oh, are we live? Yeah, we are. No, Sorry. we're not. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Let's As go. Mike shook his head no. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LaConnor High School. This broadcast with Friday Harbor Tiny TV. I'm Kayla Olin. He's Brian Jackson, as always. In case you missed it, he was on vacation, but brought back the sun for us. I was, I was on you, a business trip. You travel, were on not, vacation. Not vacation. If you were sitting in the sun, you're on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was working in the sun, you're but I do solar energy, just in case you don't know. <laughs> everyone who, everyone who works with you was like, what? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Busted. Kay, Kayla, Kayla's got the jokes today. And hey. we are here as the Friday Harbor Wolverines are looking at two bounce back and secure their spot in the postseason play as they are taking on the LaConnor Braves, who they lost to at home by about 18 points. So huge game right now against this, I would kind of say underrated rivalry. Both teams always kind of have a little rivalry for each other, whether yeah. it's football, baseball, basketball. Yep. Now football-wise, uh, <laughs> Friday Harbor's owned it the last couple of years. That is, that is true. And so we're going to go ahead and thank our sponsors before we really break down this Lemon Computers pregame show. So thank you to Brown's Home Center, the island's only full-service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, and Pacific Rim Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and the San Juan Islands Bureau. That was a lot. What a mouthful. All right, first key for the boys is to make their lands. You weren't physically there, but you did watch, mm -hmm. and lands were something that I think the Wolverines really struggled with, whether it was on fast breaks or kind of just getting the ball down low and in the paint. Right. Gavin Mason only having two points, that is, I would say, a little bit mind-blowing. Yeah. And so it's a lot of missed lanes from that, and if they want to stay in this game and take home a win, they got to make them. So 30 points last game, that's, that's just not going to cut it. you got to score more than that. And to be able to do that, uh, LaConnor's going to come out in a full court press. That's what they did last game. And they commit four guys to the front court. And on the back side, we often have two people wide open for a layup. So yeah. let's see them. Let's hit that open pass. Let's make the layups. For the second key is to defend the three. Mm. LaConnor has always been decent outside shooters. Right. And I think one of those is Trey Casey. It's a lot for him to miss those threes, that is for sure. And so with him and Charlie Cram being a great point guard and outside shooter, defending those threes, getting out on them early, and identifying those key shooters will be huge for the Wolverines. Yeah, and I think what we need to do on that, Kayla, is not play a zone defense. Last game when we played these guys, we packed in in a zone. They moved the ball around the top of the horn, and they were getting a lot of open threes, and that's what hurt us. If we go to a man-to-man, -man, we're much better defensively, so I'm hoping that's what we'll see tonight. And for the third and final key for the boys is to play composed and settled down. From my personal point of view, when they were playing at Darrington, everyone was tripping over each other. They weren't really getting a good hand on the ball, going off of their feet, kind of just throwing it out of bounds. They yep. were definitely, and I'm sure a lot of it had to do with the fact that they felt first place in the league slipping away as the game went on, as they mm -hmm. kind of weren't able to really pull back into it, but to just settle down, play how they do, and everything else will fall into place. Yeah, totally agree with that one. I know you didn't you didn't see the last time we played LaConnor, but when we had that game, LaConnor put so much pressure on us that we did lose our composure. 
probably 60% of their points came on turnovers from Friday Harbor going the other direction. So as long as we can play composed, not trip over each other as you just quoted um, or just said, then I think we'll be just fine. I definitely agree, especially because you and I talked about it a little bit, but people thought this was definitely going to be a rebuilding year for the Wolverines. It has been not that at all. They were it tied for first going into the game on Tuesday, lost to Darrington, so now currently sitting in second. And this game was essentially like we were talking about will be for their postseason appearance or not. Yeah, yeah, it is It is crucial. There's a really a tight, jam-packed, three-way based tie for second place right now. You've got Friday Harbor. We're at 5-3. We, we own second place. However, right behind us at Orcus with five, at 5-4 five and four, and then LaConnor at 4-4. Four and four. Mountain View Christian, they don't really count as far as their record, but we need this win. If we get this win, we're in. We're guaranteed to be in. If we lose then we kind of have to hope that Darrington beats LaConnor next week at home. It's here at LaConnor for us to get in. That's what it's going to come down to. And it kind of just becomes super tricky because Friday Harbor beats Orcus once, loses once, you know. Loses to LaConnor twice. Ex if that, if this exactly. So it, it, it all just becomes very difficult. Yep. And kind of I want you to pick out, before we really even start get to see anybody play, for everybody watching, two players – Kayla Keys players for the Wolverines and two players for the Braves. For the Wolverines, uh, Gavin Mason is going to be very, uh, you're asking me, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't always like to talk to myself. <laughs> Occasionally. Oh, you said Kayla's Keys. I just want to make sure. Okay, so Gavin Mason is going to be really important tonight for the Wolverines. I just think that when he is, when he's bodying people up, he's playing aggressive, good things tend to happen. The second one for me tonight is going to be Ethan Germain. And the reason that, like is, that is, is is Ethan Ethan is a great shooter. You saw that in the Darrington game. He hit a few threes from the yeah. outside, some of them are almost near NBA range. When he's aggressive and he's looking for his shot, good things tend to happen for the Wolverines, and it spreads everybody else out so that we can – we got more lanes to drive to the hole in that. So those, those two are going to be big for me tonight. I can only imagine the car ride home if Ethan doesn't get a three tonight, but Olivia did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of sibling rivalry hopefully yep. going on there. But, and then for the brave side of things. For the brave side of things. Why don't you give me the brave side of things, their, their, uh, their lineup here. Okay, so Trey Casey, that's the one you talked about earlier, that um, he's fast. He, if he can get open for threes, that's going to be somebody that we need to we need to stop and try to make sure that we have a hand on the entire time. I don't know, we need to go with number two. I would with number 11, Kirk. I'm going to go turn up to the last game we did. Another one, number 21, um, Elijah Porter. He, he is good, too. He drained a lot of threes against us last game. So if we shut him down, too, we'll be we'll be okay. He was definitely the last time I actually got to see LaConnor play was a couple seasons ago at the Crush and the Slush Tournament, back when uh, Trey Casey, Charlie Cram, Porter was still there. And Porter was still fairly young. He was only a freshman if I remember correctly uh -huh. and just he would come off the bench and just hit threes that's yeah. what he did and petroleum services starting lineup and 315 Carter Avenue fuel for your boat car and home deliveries we'll also thank our sponsors one more time thank you to Brown's Home Center the island's only full service building supply center MEM Enterprises King's Market San Juan Fitness Center Star Excavation and Septic Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Plants, Repair, Farmers Insurance, and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Grum Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and San Juan Island Bureau. There you go. So Kayla, what's the over-under on us having a national anthem before the game? Yeah. Or a pledge? We missed that last game. I mean, that's what we're doing. Our high school is the voice of those people. Please rise for the national anthem.
Joshua Jolly for the Connor Gray singing that national anthem. You chip in a little bit there at the start, right? Yeah, you did, but I thought you were going to full blown, like, belt out some. Well, I, as soon as I realized that they had somebody singing, and I probably didn't want to over sing over him. That would yeah, probably be you, did, you definitely did not want to show up that child, that is for All sure. All right, so let's go through the starters for the Wolverines. Here they come. Awesome. So for the Wolverines, we have. Number four, senior five foot nine, Ty Anderson. Number 10, senior six foot, Jaden Jones. Senior five foot nine, number 12, Ethan Germain. Number 23, sophomore five foot nine, Dylan Roberson. Number 35, senior six foot, Gavin Mason. For the LaConnor Braves, he's a senior. Number one, five foot six, Trey Casey. Number three, senior five foot eight, Charlie Cram. Junior five foot 10, number 11, Charles Baker. Junior five foot ten, number twenty one, Elijah Porter, and then rounding out the Braves is junior six foot two, number forty one, Ashley Davis. We went through those quick. That's awesome. That's good. So, so these little guys for these little guys, I was kind of these uh, vertically challenged players for some of them are the fast. And then they, uh, they get in the passing lanes and they cause a lot. They disrupt us a ton. So we got to make sure we're on top of that. I think that it's a good comparison to the Lakewood team that w the Wolverines faced last season. They were very short, but very fast very and fast, moved yeah. the ball around very efficiently. Okay, here we go. Big game here, as we said. We win the game, we're in. So let's just take care of business. Not have to worry about anything else, right? Right. I see a bag over there you'd love to see, Kayla. Look at that green bag. You like, think that looks good right there? I don't think what I want to say, I can say publicly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad. My dad says if you have nothing nice to say, then don't say anything at all. Kayla, you have never been to a game until you've been to Logan, Utah, to watch the Utah State Aggies play basketball or football. It's an experience. Yeah, I have a better taste with Utah State after my whole picks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we won the tip. Here we go. So they're coming out in the zone, it looks like. Roberson to Anderson, swings at Jermaine, finds Gavin, left corner, back out, Jermaine to Anderson, penetrates, uh -oh. loose ball on the floor is picked up. It's a good battle. Should be a travel. Or they're going to call Charles Baker with a push. That That's going to be his first personal first team foul. So that was 100% caused by effort by Ty Anderson. Because he, he turned over the ball, he didn't give up on it, though. Fresh set of numbers on that shot uh, clock and a five second violation. Yeah, so we've seen a few of those last game. So Freddie Harbour's gonna come out and kind of a man press. Kind of a soft man press, it looks like. Able to break it easy. Baker inside finds Porter. Baseline drives, kicks outside. Nutson trying to get it inside. Bad pass. Gets turned over to the Wolverines. Okay, here's here's where the challenge is going to come. This is what we could not break last game. Their full court press. Let's see how it looks. They're kind of in a softer press this game, it looks like, than they did last game. Looks like it's going to be a trap whenever it gets to a corner. Yeah. Anderson gets over to Jermaine. 
Inside Roberson, elbow. Right hand hook, Roberson's the first to score for either team. That was a good aggressive move by Roberson. Step through, able to make the layup. Good shot. Wolverines in a man, full court press. Across to Knudsen. Gives it up to Cram, penetrates. Outside, Baker wants a three, can't get it to go. Loose ball. Porter comes up with that rebound. Swings it, Cram. Drives, handoff. Knudsen, corner, inside. Shot's good for two. That was a good ball fake by Hudson, able to get Roberson up in the air and then drive right by. Reverse, Anderson across the half court line. Picks up his dribble, gives it to Mason. Roberson reset the offense. Jermaine to Anderson, swings it, Roberson penetrates. Skip pass, Jermaine right side, baseline drive, jumpers, good. good. That's Net a good didn't shot even by, move. That's a good shot by uh, Ethan Jermaine, that was one of our keys to the game. So that puts the score four to two with 540 left in the first quarter. Porter, top of the horn, gives it over to Baker, left wing, penetrates, spin the paint. Back to Porter, floater from left corner, no good, rebounded by Jermaine. Gives it up to Roberson, pushing the offense, finds Anderson by himself, left side. And a foul is called against the Braves. It's going to be called on number 41, Ashley Davis, his first personal second team foul is number 25, Isaiah Price, checking in for the Braves. Yeah, it's a different coach, you can tell. That was a, that was a good uh, drive by uh, Jermaine Dylan Roberson. Jermaine wants a three, no good. Rebounded by Roberson, back outside Jermaine. Looks like he traveled with it, but a little po coach being paused on that one. That was good to see. So we're still sticking in the, kind of that man-to-man -man defense, which I, that's what I, one of the keys. We want to make sure we did that instead of the zone. Baker picks up his dribble over to Cram, right wing. Finds Knutson. I feel like that was just good defense. Jaden Jones slid his feet over, cut the man off. Great defense play by Jones. Foul's called on number 10, Jaden Jones, his first personal first team foul. Cram gets into Porter. Baker, Nutson inside. Price. Cram with a deep three, can't go. Loose ball goes in favor of the Wolverines. I can already tell that the Wolverines are playing much better defense than we saw last time these two teams met up. Very aggressive defense already. Mm -hmm. So 4.56 left in the quarter. The score is now 4-2 to two for Friday Harbor. Swings it. Roberson across the timeline. Picks up his dribble, gives it to Anderson. Jermaine back to Roberson. Inside Mason. Spin move, kicks out. Roberson wants a three. No good. Just shorts, good shot, really good look. Baker with the rebound, Knudsen and Roberson one on one. Decides to kick it back out to Porter who wants his own three. That one's good. That's what hurt us last game. He had a lot of threes, kind of that inside out game. And the Braves will take a 30 second timeout. We would like to thank our sponsors super quickly. Thank you to Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center. MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating and Geyser Appliance Repair. Score is five to four in favor of the Braves with 419 left in the first quarter. What are you thinking after about three minutes and 45 seconds of play? Well, I think you can tell both teams are playing very hard. I, I like our man-to-man -man defense a lot better than when we sat back in the zone the last time these two, te uh, you know, these two teams met up. But uh, they're going to come out in their full court press. It's it's five to four. It's still a little bit lower scoring game. We just got to make sure we get our hands out on those three pointers. They've already shot like four or five of them. Tegan Augustin for the Wolverines gets the ball across the timeline, gives up to Anderson. Over to Mason. Get past Anderson to Roberson. Back to Anderson. 
inside Tegan. Good ball movement. Great ball movement. Four seconds on the shot clock. Roberson penetrates. Shot clock violation. That was good ball movement by the Wolverines, but it was also really good defense by LaConnor. No one just got open enough to get a nice good look. Yeah. Number 15, Spencer Olsen checking in for the Braves. Porter tries to hand off to Cram. Roberson doesn't let him, has to give it over to Olsen. Remy August also in for the Wolverines. Porter penetrates, stolen away by Roberson. He will try and push it, slows it down, gives it up to Jermaine. Roberson left wing, around the top, outside, Jermaine. Behind the back, Charlie Cram comes away with the steal. Jermaine and Cram, Cram's left-handed lay -in's good. That was good defense by Cram. I don't think, uh, you know, Jermaine tried to go behind the back. He just got his hand in the passing lane. Uh oh That's what got us that first game, that full court press. Starting to shake us up a little bit again. So scores now seven to four with 251 left in the first quarter. They steal by Porter. It gets tipped out of bounds by the Wolverines. Joshua Jolly checking in for the Braves. LaConnor ball on the sideline coming across half court. Jolly to Porter, penetrates, outside, Olsen. Jolly in the paint, down low is Price for two. Deep bench for these Braves, and Rod will take a 30 second timeout. Yeah, so that puts the score now to nine to four for LaConnor, and they're, they're, you can feel the energy of the crowd it picked up. They're just playing aggressive and causing some turnovers, which is leading to easy buckets. We'd like to thank Farmers Insurance and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Serving, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, and Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center. Definitely not super settled down under the Wolverines yet. Yeah. It's gonna take a little bit to come into their own. Yeah. Also facing a very deep bench, kind of how we talked about with the Braves. Right. They're yeah. not out of it yet and they need to know that. No, absolutely. Just be positive. You'll be okay. We were looking good there in the, in the first few minutes of the game, playing some denial defense, causing them a little bit of fits on offense, but it's been the, their full court press and the turnovers that have led to the buckets for uh, Lacano. Braves don't come out in their full court press. As Roberson crosses the timeline, directing traffic. Kenny Halleck is now in for the Wolverines. Jermaine, back to Roberson, penetrates, throws it up, left side, we'll go to the line to shoot two. So that's a good aggressive drive and he again gets rewarded with the, the foul. He's gonna be able to go to the free throw, free throw line for two free throws. Foul is called on number three, Charlie Cram, his first personal third team foul. Roberson's first shot is up and good. Second shots away, just off the back iron. Good effort. Saved by Price before it go Olsen before it goes out of bounds. Porter four on one. Wow. Right side like it was nothing. That was a great move. He, it was one on four and did a Euro step, able to get to the basket. That was a great move. Puts the score now to 11 to five. Robertson across the timeline. Directing traffic, finds Remy. Roberson, right corner, trapped. They're gonna call foul. Looks more like a blocking foul than a hold in my opinion, but. Foul is called on number 13, Joshua Jolly, his first personal fourth team foul. Just Roberson forcing the issue, that was good. Playing aggressive. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna say he stepped over the, the end line. Remy was all by himself in that left corner over there. Porter, Cram, Jolly finds Porter, drives baseline, left side, wants to hook oh. it. No good. 
That's a good box out that caused that foul. The, they're going to get Isaiah Price for his first personal fifth team foul for the Braves. So far, the boys team has more team fouls than the girls <laughs> team did all yeah. game. Yeah, that's the fifth team foul on LaConnor. Remy handoff to Jermaine. Finds Roberson. Cross timeline. Broke Reset. press good on that one. Definitely. I feel like they have a few different press breaks that they use. Out to Jermaine. Down low, Remy. Drives baseline. Halleck from the left side, no good. And a foul is called, will shoot two. That was a good, uh, good job by Re uh, Kenny trying to get to the hole. Be able to pick up the fouls he was going up. Fouls called on number 20, Elijah Porter. His first personal sixth team foul. Wolverines will be in bonus the rest of the way. Halleck's first shot is just shy. And number one, Trey Casey checking in for the Braves. Second shot is up and good. So that puts the score to 11 to six with 50 seconds left in the opening period. Jolly, back to Cram, directing traffic over to Casey. Skip past Jolly. Oh. Casey tries to get it inside to Price too hard. It's a good pass, he just didn't see it coming. Through his hands, it'll be Wolverine ball with 35.6 seconds left, so still a shot clock. Halleck over to August. Keegan finally gives it back to Roberson. Penetrates left side. Good left move. hand laying's perfect. Yeah, Roberson does a good job getting to the hole. So that puts the score now to 11 to eight. 13 seconds remaining. Braves coming down the court. Casey, Cram, swings it, Jolly, back to Cram. Casey's our shooter, you know he's gonna take a look. Olsen wants the shot instead and will sink a three. That was a big shot right at the end of the quarter. You could tell, you wanna make sure you know how much time's left. Get your hands up. And after the first quarter, LaConnor Braves are up on the Friday Harbor Wolverines, 14 to eight. And we'd like to thank our sponsors. Thank you to Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computer, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Room Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and the San Juan Island Bureau. What adjustments are you making going into this well, second quarter? Well, I think the biggest thing that I'm seeing is we're not scoring. I mean, you, if you look at the season, we're averaging about 41 points a game. We had eight in the opening quarter. We need to have some other guys stepping up besides Roberson trying to, to score. He's got six points, which has really been helpful. So he's got six of our eight. Um, Want to see some other guys step up trying to shoot the ball. That's the biggest thing. Tell him to be aggressive. Go to the hole. On the floor for the Wolverines is Remy Teagan, Gavin Mason, Dylan Roberson, and Ethan Germain. There we go. Tip pass is stolen away by Mason. Gives it up to Roberson. He'll pull it out, reset the offense. Jermaine to Mason. Gives up to Remy. Penetrates, kicks it back out to Jermaine. Around, left side, Roberson. At the elbow, back out, Jermaine. Good jump fake and is fouled on the shot. That was a good penetration. That's what I wanted to see. Want to see some, some of the players being aggressive trying to get to the hole. So it's now 14 to eight, 7 18 left in the quarter. Foul is called on number 11, Charles Baker. His second personal, seventh team foul. Jermaine's first shot's good. Number two, Kyson Jackson checking in for the Wolverines in place of Jermaine. Next, dead baller made free throw. And Ty Anderson coming in in place of Roberson. 
Good shot by Ethan. Being aggressive. Okay, 14 to 10. Let's see if we can get some points up and play defense on the other side. Almost tossed out of bounds. Baker with a save, gives it up to Cram. Knutson, right side. They're gonna call it off of Teagan. We'll stay with LaConnor. 22 seconds on the shot clock, 7.04 on the game clock. Wolverines are trailing 14 to 10. It's good defensive deflection down there. Cram Knutson. Oh, good pass. Below the basket, trapped. Finds Price, can't get his shot there to we fall. Go. Good rebound. Anderson, Anderson finally comes down with the rebound. Oh, that Head was not down a to Remy, and they will call Baker out of bounds. That was scary. Good. I like the look. It had too much hang time. Way, it looked like had a shot. Too, had too much hang time. <laughs> yeah, it was just a lob pass. I didn't quite understand that one. Oh. It's an unfortunate for Mason. It was a travel, but yeah. it wasn't intent. It was kind of just going for the save and right. the way it went down. But Roberson comes in. Okay, so 14 to 10, 6.46 left in the second quarter. Cram directing traffic down low to Price. Back out, Cram. Nuts in. Inside Price, tipped by Mason. If they call Mason with that foul, it's pretty bad. <laughs> and the foul is called on Gavin Mason, his first personal second team foul. So the Wolverines are going to stay in their zone, it looks like. Nuts in, jumper, right corner. Oh. Can't get it to go, but his foul on the shot will shoot too. Remy was trying to be aggressive there. He just jumped up in the air and kind of went into him and created the foul. It is Remy August's first personal, third team foul against the Wolverines. Knutson's first shot is up and away and good. Boy, it has been a long time since I've seen anybody jump at the foul line when they shoot. <laughs> Not since Little League, he's doing it. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it took me until about junior or senior year to stop jumping. Okay. And I still go like all the way up on my tippy toes. <laughs> Kenny Halleck has checked in for Friday Harbor. Knutson second shots up and no good. We we'll call a lane violation. I think they called it on the shooter and he's not happy about that. Yeah, well, it didn't go in anyway. Okay, they're, they're coming out in the press, a little half court press. Robertson gives up to Mason across town line. Hand off to Jane Jones who's checked in for the Wolverines. Back to Mason. Swings at Halleck, left wing, looking inside Jones. Outside Mason, good wants passing. a three, oh. can't get it to go. It's a good and shot. Rebounded by Knutson. Good shot. Gives it up quarter. It's a NBA travel again. if they call that foul. Yeah, the guy was just standing his ground. I can't, uh, I think they're calling that on Jaden Jones, but he looked like he was just standing his ground. It looked like a travel to me. You had it. Coach is not, that's what he's wanting too. Foul's called on Jane Jones, his second personal fourth team foul, and the fans are letting the refs know that they do not like that call. Porter to the line to shoot two. And it's short. Take lessons from his friend, a <laughs> little, little bit legs. <laughs> Maybe jump a little bit on that free throw. So scores now 15 to 10 for LaConnor. Second shot is up and it is in and out. Rebounded by Tegan. Good job. Oh, August. Go get it, go get it. Loose there ball picked up by Halleck. Phew. He's got that broken hand. It's probably a little bit harder for him to catch. Gotta help. Inside Mason turns. Tegan. Oh. Hook from the right side. Banks it. That was one of those things you just threw it up. We're gonna say it's a prayer and it went in. It was answered. <laughs> wow. We need I, some of those. I was not sure when he shot that, but it worked, and that. Good job. Good box out by the Wolverines. One shot and done. Sidizic three was not able to go. Wolverines come up with the rebound as Jackson comes down the court, gives up to Mason, left side. He's fouled. Foul. There we go. We'll get two shots. Momentum on Wolverine's side right now. So the difference that I'm seeing right now, Kayla, is they're pushing the ball, they're being aggressive going to the hole, and they're cutting into this lead now as a result. Foul is called number 41, Ashley Davis, his second personal eighth team foul. Mason's first shot is up and no good. I think that was kind of where the Wolverines struggled a little bit against Darrington is their really good player, Bashawn Williams, who was a center, 
played the whole entire time. It wasn't until Dylan Roberson started taking him one on one that they did they didn't draw fouls. Yeah. Mason makes a second. Nuts in back cram. Ooh, almost. So we're we're doing a little bit more of an extended zone, it looks like here. Guys open in the back side. Cram swings it, Knutson inside Davis, back out Cram. Knutson into the paint. Floater, too hard. Let's go, let's Loose go. ball, oh. rebounded by Cram. Pulls it back out, reset the offense. Cram inside Davis, outside Sidiskic. Porter, wants a three, no good. And they are going to call Miles Sidiskic with his, with an offensive over the back. His first personal ninth team foul. Should be one and one because there is no possession. Who's shooting? Uh, like probably Mason. Mason. Yep. So we can tie up this game. We've got a lot of momentum going in with this group. I like like what I'm seeing out of Friday Harbor. Number so 12, Ethan Germain has checked in for the Wolverines. What were you saying? I was just saying with this, this group, we've been picking it up, being a little bit more aggressive on offense. Oh, Can't quite earn himself a second. Rebounded by Price. Chairman Porter swinging it on the top of the horn, back and forth, trying to get the defense to move a little bit. Inside Price, off the glass for two. Yeah, they had ball movement going on right there that was very good, and then as a result, they got the open man down low. Mason, right corner, brings it back out to Jackson. Gives up to Roberson, reset the offense, directing traffic. Mason looking inside, inside Keegan August. Down low, Roberson trying to shoulder his way in, gets his Got own it. tip and puts it up for two. That was just effort on that one that caused that. Knutson tries to go two on one, trapped, oh, stolen go. away by Roberson. And a blocking foul against Knutson should send Roberson to the line to shoot. It'll be two now. There we go. So this can tie up the game. No pressure to make the first one. You're guaranteed a second as the foul is called on number five, Andre Knutson, his first personal 10th team foul. I like the way that you put that. No pressure on the first one. You're guaranteed a second because it's the double bonus. Makes his first. There we go. Got to hit those free throws. Roberson split his first time at the line. Splits his second. Rebounded by Porter. Did the same thing, yeah. Gives up to Cram, cuts in. Back to Roberson, swings it. Porter, back and forth like they do. You're going to get it inside to Price within the next few passes. Knutson penetrates, baseline. Backside. Outside, Baker swings it back out to Porter, who's in the paint. He likes Gets that Gets away step, with the so travel again. Still not calling that. And yeah. it's either going to go against August or Mason. It looks like August. It's Teagan August's first personal 15 oh, no. foul. Number three, Remy August in for the Wolverines in place of Mason. Give him a quick break. 3.42 left in the game. Baker wants a three, gets it to go. Third three of the night so far for the Braves. That was a big shot. We gotta make sure we get coverage on that corner. Roberson tries to go all the way, can't get it to go. Tegan August comes up with the rebound, hooks it right side. August having a great night with his nice. shots. Battling. Baker skips it to Porter, there loose ball. Outside Cram, back to Porter. Play Monkey in the middle, Roberson's in the middle. Porter penetrates, floater. Rebound. Off the back iron, no good, loose ball. Battle. Come on, go get on that, Ethan. And they're going to call a foul. Wow, they gave us a timeout. There was no real possession. This coach is going to lose his mind. Oh, I can see that. That was, we'll take it, but I don't think we'd anybody can, had possession. I see the vein in his forehead. <laughs> He's not happy. Uh, 
And wow. it looks like Rod right, we'll is given a 30 second timeout. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Everyone on the Friday Harbor side is surprised with that one. Yeah. But that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and thank our sponsors anyway. So thank you to MEM Enterprises. They will be sponsoring this halftime show coming up in just under three minutes. Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Room Insulation, and Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center. Kayla, hmm. it's been exciting that we're, we're, uh, we're in a tight game. Yeah, two-point game. Wolverines will get the ball because they were granted that timeout on the loose ball on the floor. With 2.53 left, Braves are going to come out in a full timeout or in a full court press. Where you have the advantage right now is you're in double bonus. Yep. So be aggressive, go to the hole, get a foul. B, E, aggressive. Oh, man. <laughs> Here's the cheerleading coming out. I'm, we're going to we're gonna see how many sports we can throw into this. Jermaine across the timeline. Trapped, finds Remy. Gets it to Jackson. Jackson, baseline, down low. Off of Teagan's foot. Baker comes up with the steal and then Jackson will get a foul. Trying to poke it out from behind his back. It's Kyson Jackson's first personal sixth team foul. Ty Anderson checking in in place of Jackson. That was good effort, just being aggressive. Got his hand in there and they called the foul on him. Cram, Porter, back and forth. Swings it, Knutson, left corner. Back to Cram. Back and forth, Porter. Cram wants a three and gets mm. it. Just the two guys up top, gotta make sure we're guarding that three. Dylan Roberson over to Jermaine. Left wing, back out to Roberson, reset the offense. Remy looking inside. Anderson, Roberson, jumper oh, for about seven short. feet, no good. It was a great move, good hop step, but just left it short. Baker finds Price down low, jumper baseline. Can't get it to fall. Anderson with the rebound. Quick series for the Braves. Remy comes left side, gets it to go. Three point game. Price trapped by Remy, by the August brothers. Gets that to Baker, Baker wants a three off the back iron, no good. Tipped out of bounds, is it going to? Goes in favor of Friday Harbor. Tyson Jackson checking in for the Wolverines. Okay, so 123 left in the in the half. The score is now 23 to 20. Gavin Mason also back in for Friday Harbor. Jackson, three on two will get a chance to shoot two at the line. It's going to be called against number 15, Spencer Olson, his first personal, 11th team foul. First shot is no good. A little short. Number 13, Joshua Jolly checking in for Friday Harbor. Jackson's second shot is off the back iron, no good, and rebounded by Porter. Outside Cram, swings, nuts in, inside right corner, down low, Porter. Skip pass to Olsen on the outside three, no good. Let's go. Tipped and rebounded by Mason. One minute to go, 31 seconds on the shot clock. Wolverines down by three, 23-20. Jackson into the paint, kicks outside August. Remy, right side. Good move, oh. No good, can't get it to go, rebounded by Porter. Just a lid on that basket, that was a great move. Slowing it down, Porter chucks it down side, Jolly. Get past Cram, swings, nuts in, drives right side baseline, jumper just short. Rebounded by Remy August, loose ball is stolen oh, and thrown so out of bounds by the Braves will go in favor of the Wolverines. Shot clock will be turned off 31.2 seconds, still 23-20. Wolverines coming down the court as the Braves are in a full court press. Let's see if we try to hold it for the last shot of this half. What do you think? <laughs> We're still in, in a perfect full court world. Press. Anderson. Uh oh. Tipped out of bounds by Porter. We'll take it out on the sideline. On the floor for the Wolverines is Anderson, Roberson, Remy August, Kyson Jackson, and Gavin Mason. 
Throws it to the backcourt where Roberson waits, cross timeline. Gives it up to Anderson, 17 seconds. Swings, Remy August. Jackson, top of the horn. The handoff back to Roberson, 10 seconds. Use the screen from Mason, down low, Mason. Inside, Roberson, left side, right oh, side, hook for it. two! Good move, we needed that to turn off. Roberson's right side hook just before the buzzer closes the gap to one. Yeah, we needed that. So that's going to help us bring it a little bit closer as the score is 23 to 22. Much better second quarter, it felt like, scoring-wise than the first quarter. Most definitely, Wolverines held the Braves to only nine points that second quarter as they score 14. We would like to thank our sponsors. Before we talk about our MEM Enterprises Halftime Show, thank you to Brown's Home Center, the island's only full-service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance, and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Rim Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and San Juan Islands Bureau. Wow. Oof. All memorized. That's impressive. So, second quarter, wow. much, much better than the first quarter as far as the way that the scoring opened up and then, then the defense led to some points on the offense. They definitely settled into their own. They started to make LaConnor have some more problems, such as those bad passes. Uh, kind of got a little bit more careless in it when it came to fouling. So, definitely became more of a threat yeah. to the Braves yeah, that you, second half. You can tell LaConnor is definitely the aggressive team right now. That's why they had 10 to, you know, 10 team fouls pretty early on, which was awesome for us getting on the getting to the free throw line. We just got to hit our free throws. We missed a few free throws. Otherwise, we'd have a pretty decent lead right now. And then talking about our keys and breaking them down, did they do them? Did they not? Maybe the first one was to make lay-ins. And those easy lay-ins that they were missing against Darrington are on fast breaks. Yeah, it looked like we, were, we made some of our layups today. Tegan had a really, really good <laughs> right-handed hook, that one. And then, of Threw course, up. the Roberson... Roberson's laying down there with the last second to yeah. close the lead to one. Yeah, Huge Roberson's lands. looking very good right now, especially going to the hole. When he gets himself to the hole, he's able to finish, and uh, that's, that's helping him quite a bit right now. And then the second key was to defend the three. Mm. Overall, they have allowed four threes yeah. to be scored, four different shooters, so kind of really not one to focus on. Obviously, you can kind of pinpoint the few that are the better scorers in terms of threes, but you have Charlie Cram who had one, Charles Baker with one, Spencer Olsen with one, and then Elijah Porter with yeah, one. Yeah, what I, what I saw as we, we, you know, in the second quarter, I thought offensively we picked it up, but defensively we kind of set back in the zone, and that's why they were able to get some of those three-point shots that they did. So half the team's points. So I'd say that, that area we need to improve. And something they definitely, I would say, kind of defend a little bit better. I'm not saying they did a bad job of it, but if this is a one-point game mm -hmm. and if they're just exchanging threes for twos, it's a punch you don't really want to. Right kind of yeah. go into slugfest wise and then number three was to settle down yeah i think they definitely were not settled down in their first quarter second quarter looked a little better what do you think because again you get to see these kids play a lot more than yeah I, I mean we're definitely breaking the press better this game than we did the last time these two teams played each other however the first quarter we weren't doing great the second quarter we were much better and that's why we're back in the game like we are and as for the players that you thought were keys and ones to watch for. For the Wolverines, you said Ethan Germain and Gavin Mason. Yeah, so far, I've Gavin Mason has one. He took three free throws, made one of them. And then Ethan Germain has four. He's perfect from the free throw line with two of them and yeah. a field goal as well. Yeah, I thought Ethan Germain, his little uh, pull-up jumper to the right side, that was a great shot. You know, then forced on the foul and then made the two free throws. That was good for Ethan Germain to, to positive. Like to see Gavin Mason be more aggressive. He did take the outside three, didn't didn't get it to fall, but uh, really I think the story up for the Wolverines offensively so far has been Roberson. He's been the one that's been putting up most of the points for us. Yes, so far he has 10 points. Yeah, he is two half. for four from the free throw line, four field goals. Other scorers is Remy August with two. 
Kenny Halleck with one. He was one for two from the free throw line. We mentioned Gavin Mason. And then Tegan August has four points so far as well. Yeah, I think really for the, the Wolverines to be a great basketball team and take it to the next level, we've got to have multiple scores. We can't just rely upon one person because it's easy for other teams to key on that person, shut him down, and then you don't have anything else. we got to get some more scoring going on from others. Really is. And then scores for the Braves is number three, Charlie Cram. He has five Andre Knutson with three, Charles Baker with his single tray that he made, Spencer Olson with one tray, Elijah Porter with five, and Isaiah Price with four. So where they're doing a better job is they're, they're spreading out their scoring they than what we are. They definitely are. And the people that you kind of really said to watch for, Charles Baker was one of them. He has taken quite a few threes but only made one. Mm. What's... Is it just not his night, or you think the Wolverines are doing a really good job defending yeah, him? Yeah, just some. It looks like he's a little bit off on his shot. It's definitely not rely on that one, though. No. I kind of act as if he always makes them. Right. And then going into a half, I think it's really going to come down to timeouts. Rod had to use all of his 30 so far. He really got lucky with that one, so he yeah. has three yeah. fulls left, whereas the Braves have four. So I think that's also important to watch going into it, especially if it comes down to such a close game. Sure. No, I like that we fought and got back in the game. I think, what, at the end of the first half, it was 14-8? to eight. Yes. Is that right? So Their biggest deficit. Yeah, so in the in the second half, we were able to close, and, and now it's a one-point game, 23-22. So our scoring picked up a bit. We scored 14 in the second half. That, that that's, a, that's a positive. And if you are Coach Rod right now at halftime, what are you telling your team right now? What kind of adjustments are you making? Are you just going to keep going with what's working right now and no adjustments? I think adjustments I would make is I'd, I like the man-to-man -man defense better than the zone against these guys, and, and it eliminates those threes because you, you just kind of hit it in the head. They've got four three-pointers. That's half the team's points that they have, um, over half the team's points for them. So get back into a man, deny the basketball, let's get some steals and go on the fast break the other way. As far as offensively, good things are happening when we're driving the ball. It's opening up the shooters on the outside. That's where we've had a lot of our points has been like Dylan getting all the way to the hole. So I'd tell our guys, be aggressive, drive the basketball, good things happen. This is a very fast team that plays on their toes. Their defense is really great. So while swinging, it's definitely helping. I'd like to see a little bit more maybe skip passes to kind of really break down that defense can't really keep up with it and move as fast. If you're skipping, look for those open players. There was the five-second inbound violation stepping on the line when Remy was open in the left side. So maybe just keep your head up a little bit more, too. All right. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. We will thank our sponsors one more time. We have about three minutes left of half time. And we would like to thank Brown Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and San Juan Island Bureau. Wolverines are the first out of the locker room. I always. Connor girls, I think with this, girls took two and a half seconds yeah. in the locker room at their halftime. So yeah. I think with with this team, it's a good sign. Just let them go out and play, be aggressive, tell them to go to the hole, and good things happen. I think one of the things I've noticed with Friday Harbor, when we try to slow down and run the offense, we're not as good. <laughs> just flat out. Let's let's let, let them play. Fast break, we'll be good. Watch your switch it. Go. Are you switching? Like yeah. The man for her press. I definitely like the Connors full court press when it comes to, you know, like dropping back a little bit and then trapping when you get a little closer. Right. It's kind of a soft, it looks like to me, like a soft man full court press where we're just letting them bring it up. I would like to see the same thing. I don't think these, these guards are very skilled. If we came in a, a trapping, you know, put more, commit more, yeah. more men up to the front court, we can get some steals out of it. Charlie Cram has been their starting point guard for four years, good ball handler. Uh, we can take him. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> Trey Casey's a good ball handler. They have good ball handlers, but how they are under pressure is something you should really figure out coming into the second half. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think we're going to be just fine. So the score is 23-22 at the end of the first half. Kind of a crucial 
game right here, swing game, where if we, we, uh, we you know, we win. Lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> But it makes it exciting they, basketball. They, exactly, Let's go. exactly. Dylan Roberson. Yeah, doing good. Ice water in those veins. We got to get some other scores, Mike. Can't be one guy. How many does Roberson have? Ten. And I feel like I, I, I'm going to jinx myself for this, but every season so far I've had overtime games with the boys and girls, and I haven't had one yet this season. So. I think it's going to happen. Got to catch that 750 ferry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't have that problem. I know. Do you live down in the Seattle area? Yes. And you come up to every one of these games? That's, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's a long drive. It's committed. Roberson across the timeline as Wolverines get the ball to start the second half. Gives it over to Jermaine. Typical starters in. Skip pass. Mason in the paint. Tipped pass. Looks like LaConnor's coming out in an aggressive zone defense. Roberson back to Anderson. Roberson, skip past Mason. Anderson, eight seconds on the shot clock. Back Faster. out, Jermaine. Three nice shot. doesn't fall as Davis picks up the rebound. It's a good shot by Ethan. I like that he took that. Porter decides to slow it down, wait for company. Cram, Nutson. He traveled. Good call. Good call. Took an extra step. It's okay. It's not like he takes five. <laughs> extra ones anyway. But to each their own. Roberson, four on one, hands it off to Jermaine. Back out Roberson, Mason. Anderson around the top, swings it, Jermaine. Good penetrates, move. jumper, good 10 move. feet. Can't get it to go, it's rebounded by Baker. So Ethan's being more aggressive this game. I like that he's shooting the ball. That was a good move. Cram, reset the offense, four out, one in. You know they're running back door. Gives a reporter. Oh, spin, spin move, move, left side, trapped by Jones. Off the glass, rebounded by Mason. So far, rebounding was definitely a struggle for them against Darrington and looking much better. Yeah, I'm glad they let them play on that one. I think Cram thought he, or yeah, is it Cram? 21, thought he got fouled. Porter, close enough. Porter, not even close. Tomato, but potato. Thought he, thought he got fouled, Tomato. he was not fouled. <laughs> Jermaine, back to Reverson, directing traffic. So no scoring Jermaine in the wants half. a right side three. Oh. That one goes. He keeps shooting. Good things are going to happen. That boy, Ethan. Him and his sister now have a three on the night. Yeah. So that gives the Wolverines the lead. First time since they first scored as Mason almost gets a steal. Well, he got to cause a turnover. There we go. And out of bounds, Knutson, as he goes to the ground after Mason tries to get a steal. First time Wolverines have led since their first bucket. Right. Second half or second quarter much better, and we're starting the third quarter on a good stock. I like what Ethan Germain is doing, being very aggressive. Mason left wing looking. Anderson left corner. Dribble it back out. Down low pass. Jermaine. Roberson swings it. Mason. Anderson right corner. Back out. Seven. Jumper from Jones baseline drives, throws it up. Oh, almost. One almost. second on the shot clock as Jones throws it up and is fouled on the shot and will shoot two. The foul is going against number 41, Ashley Davis, his third personal. That's a starter and a big boy. You know they're going to have to sit him. Yep. First team foul for the Braves in the second half. Good job again by Ethan forcing that action. He created that for Jaden Jones. Oh. Jones first shots around the rim doesn't go in. Yeah, big thing for us, if we can hit our free throws, we'd be up probably by about 10 now. Just a lot of free throws. So far, eight missed free throws. Jones makes his close. second. Porter. Gives up to Baker, top of the horn, penetrates, right side. And they're going to get Gavin Mason for that holding foul. It's going to be his second personal first team foul for the Wolverines. 
Olsen and Price in for the Braves. Olsen, outside Baker. Cram, behind the back, gives up Porter, left wing. Baker, top of the horn, statter steps. Porter now left side, outside Cram, skip past Baker. Penetrating, 15 seconds on the shot clock, stolen by good. Mason. Gives it up to Roberson all by himself from the left side for two. That was good, good defense by Gavin Mason. He caused that. I love that Gavin Mason was so aware. He threw it up the court. That Roberson off. was well ahead of him. He had somebody wolf behind him. As Remy August comes in for Mason, so Mason can take a much-deserved break. Yeah, a great start by Gavin Mason, causing those turnovers. They had the Braves stepping out of bounds in that far corner pass. Turns it over to the Wolverines. So that puts the score now 28-23, to 23, opening up the lead a little bit here. Wolverines' biggest lead so far on the night. Inside, Jones. Looks down low for Jermaine. Spins left side, five-footer, no good. good Tipped shot. out of bounds goes in favor of the Braves. Wolverine still in their full man court press. Cram guarded by Roberson across the timeline. Gives up to Olsen, right wing. Porter, top of the horn. Oh, he traveled. Jaden Jones with a steal. He's gonna give it up to Jermaine and let him bring it up over to Roberson. Anderson penetrates, jumper from the free throw line. And that wow. one's good for Anderson. That's that spread scoring offense that you're talking about That's so what we far, need to see. different that scores. Helps. There we Stolen go. Stolen away by Roberson, and the Braves are completely uncharacteristically anxious as Ro Anderson throws up a shot tipped by Jones. Will go in favor of LaConnor. No, that's a great steal and fast break and good attempt on the basket. So now it's 30 I'm to 23. I'm surprised that Connor hasn't called a timeout yet as Wolverines are on their biggest lead and run of the night. And they're playing man-to-man -man defense, like I said I wanted them to do. Eight Probably point steal, see? Eight point run for the Wolverines. And Jane Jones is going to pick up his third personal, second team foul, Tegan August checks in. Cram gives up to Porter, a left elbow. Back to Cram. Start of steps. Sidearm to Baker, who penetrates, throws it up. Right side, no good. Tipped out of bounds, probably against Roberson. No, nope. I saw it look like Cram got up, put his hand on it. Okay, so LaConnor's coming out of the press now. Remy, hand off Roberson. Reset the offense. Anderson to Jermaine. Penetrates. Good job, Jumper. Ethan. Jumper, seven feet, good. Good aggressive move by Ethan Jermaine. Be much more aggressive this game. Porter, spin move behind the back. Over to Baker. Cram, penetrates left side. Price wants a free throw jumper, gets that one to go. That's a good draw and kick by LaConnor on that play. Okay, scores 32-25, 2.13 left in the quarter. Much better quarter for the Wolverines. Definitely one of their best quarters we've seen in a while from them, at least me personally. Good I miss their home stand. Yeah. Anderson. Elbow, shot. jumper, oh. about 12 feet, good. Playing aggressive, being aggressive. Good things happen. You're gonna get Remy August with a push. That's gonna be his second personal, third team foul. And LaConnor has seen enough and will call a Full timeout. Yeah, I mean, you, you see Friday Harbor's going on a good run right now. It's 34 to 25 with 151 left in the quarter. 
we would like. This has been all Harbor so far. Oh, so much. We'd like to thank Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Kaiser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance, and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Grim Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and the San Juan Island Bureau. Like you were saying, outstanding third quarter so far. They went on a 10-0 run and led by as much as nine. Yeah, it's been a great quarter for Friday Harbor to open up the lead now, 34 to 25. Let's keep this thing running and spread it out a little bit and we'll punch our ticket to the playoffs. I would relieve a lot yeah. of anxiety. Cram. Good aggressive defense again by Up Friday Harbor. Up to Olsen, Harbor. Porter. To Baker. Back to Porter. Nice. Cram wants a three. That Got one it. goes. The Braves are using a lot of pick and rolls with all those screens, trying to really break off their defender. That's the only issue about running man is it's easier to shake them. Yeah. Okay, 34-28 now. Inside Halleck, off the back iron, no good. Rebounded by Baker. And Porter, slow it down, goes left side, met by three defenders. Price wants a three. Gets it to go. So back to back three pointers by LaConnor. That's the thing we wanted to stop was those threes. Cuts the deficit to three. 6 0 run for the Braves as the Wolverines try and get something to go offensively. Halleck looking. Roberson steps oh. back. Oh, oh, that would have been gorgeous as Price knocks it out. Wow. Whoa. Two saves under your own basket. Two, Usually you don't want to do that. Two behind the back saves. Absolutely great saves, but Price wants another three. Can't get it to go off the back iron. And they're going to get, it looks like, Anderson for an over the back foul. So the momentum has shifted quickly. We had a nine point lead. Those back to back threes has cut the lead to three now. And a lot of it is just they're do, doing some drives and kicks. Number two, Kyson Jackson on 35. Number Gavin, Gavin Mason checking in for the Wolverines as well as number three, Remy August as Ty Anderson picks up his first personal, fourth team foul. Shot clock is off, 25 seconds left in this third. Cram floater pass inside Baker. Back and forth, Cram, Cram wants that three. Doesn't quite get it to go, rebounded by Jackson. 18. Pushes it down to Halleck nice by pass. himself, right side, that one's nice good pass. for two. It's a good pass by Tyson on that one. Way to keep your head up. That's anything as good as a shot. Yeah. Porter, outside Baker. Baker oh. penetrates jumper from the free throw line. Off the back iron, can't get it to go. Okay, 36-31 in that third quarter. One more quarter, and we get to the playoffs, right? Got to win this last quarter. That, yeah. That one was definitely nerve wracking, but the good news is, is they also put up 14 points in that quarter, consistent with the second, and held LaConnor to eight. Yep. We would also like to thank our sponsors. Thank you to uh, Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance, and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Serving, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Room Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and the San Juan Islands Bureau. So one quarter to go, scores 36-31. Let's see if we can end this quarter strong. Braves will get the ball to start the final quarter. Nuts and Porter. Kind of trades, kicks outside. Almost, good steal. St stolen away by Jackson almost. Loose ball's picked up by Price. Finds oh. Porter down low. That Euro step. He's got a, he does that really well. Jackson across the timeline. Pushes it, decides to pull it back out. 
Down low, Halleck. Uh oh Good job, Kenny. Foul is going to be called on number 25, Isaiah Price, his second personal, second team foul. Foul is on the ground, Mason spin move. Get that in. one gets it to go. That is Mason's first field goal of the night. He has three on the night so far. Scores now 38-33, 7.20 left in the game. That's in over to Porter, right wing. Dribbles around. Back to the horn, Baker wants a three. Can't get it to go, rebounded by Remy August. Mason reset the offense. Remy's by himself down by the oh, basket. No, Head's gotta him. get up. Trying to run the Roberson calling for help, gives it over to Jackson. Down low, Roberson by himself, left side, he's not gonna miss. Nice job, good pass by Remy, see it in there. Seven point game, 6.41 left in it. Wolverines are leading 40-33. Momentum on our side right now, let's keep this thing rolling. Cram over to Baker, top of the horn. Gives up to Porter. Price wants his three, just short. They're gonna call it out of bounds on the Braves instead of a foul. It's a good box out, good box out. Ty Anderson checking in for Dylan Are Roberson. There, Dylan? Roberson getting a much needed break right now. So 6.20 left in the game, scores 40 to 33. Let's close it out. Scoring's Braves, been better this game. Braves back to a full court press. Jackson, one on one, left side. Ooh. Can't quite get it to go. They're gonna get a foul against the corner. The Wolverines will keep it under their own basket. Nope, not a foul, just tipped out. Anderson, inbounds. August, handoff, Jackson. Reset the offense, top of the horn. Looks like you got a three out, one in with Halleck, and yeah. Anderson wants a three just shy. Gets his own rebound. Three out run in with Remy and Mason switching off his rover. Hand off, Remy, Halleck, left elbow, hands off Jackson, back to Halleck. 14 seconds on the shot clock, skip past Anderson. Inside, August, Lulis' elbow, in. puts it off the glass for two. That's a big possession, they wasted a lot of clock and able to get two points. Officials timeout. As Ashley Davis is limping off of the court. Okay, so the score is now 42 to 33 with 529. So we opened it up to nine, they cut it down to three, and then we've opened it back up to nine. So great run by Friday Harbor. Cram, met by Mason. Down low, pass Olsen. Get pass, Knutson. Hand off, Cram. Penetrate, low pass, Price off the glass. That's a good move. Their bench player has been their highest scorer. Is a bad pass is thrown out of bounds by the Wolverines. LaConnor ball on the sideline. Jaden Jones and Dylan Roberson checking in in place of Gavin Mason and Kenny Halleck. Okay, 42-35. Five minutes to go. <laughs> My heart can't take it. Price kicks it out. Trey Casey with the three, no good. Good box out. Jackson tries to get that rebound. Actually tips it out of bounds. Will stay with the Braves under their own basket. Coach wants a timeout. Everyone in Friday Harbor could hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dixon just wants to settle them down right here. So I, I, what I've been seeing this game that's been different is that you, the scoring is up. The, 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 the intensity of Friday Harbor is up. After that first quarter that was really bad, we had what, 14 to eight? Look at the scoring since. It's been, a, the last three quarters have been really good. And we're spreading out the scoring. 
We'd like to thank Brown's Home Center, the island's only full-service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance, and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Rim Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Highland Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and San Juan Island Bureau. It's a lot. Okay, so this is a 450. I, I'm confident we're going to close this thing out. If you just jinxed it. I'm confident. Come on now. We got this. If you jinxed it, I retract my burgers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, Friday Harbor. Just play good defense here. <laughs> Casey over to Knutson. Right side, hook shot, trying to get it inside. Price can get it off the glass. No good. Ah. Gets his own rebound, tips it in, and his foul basket will count. Will shoot one. He's got to box out. Jaden Jones kind of lost him a little bit there. So second half, you can tell the fouls. I mean, there's not many fouls for both teams. But called on Jaden Jones' his fourth personal, fifth yeah. team foul. Like you were saying, though, not too many. Not like the first half where they were in the double bonus for a while. Number 12, Ethan Germain checking in in place of Kyson Jackson. Going to keep Jones on the floor with four personal fouls. Might as well see it out. Oh, that's an interesting dribble on a foul shot. Price's extra points no good, and Jones rips that rebound away. Gives it to Roberson. Jermaine, Remy August, baseline, inside pass to Jones. Oh. Tip saved by Anderson. Anderson left side. Gets it over to Jermaine. Jermaine, baseline jumper, 10 oh. feet, no good. Rebounded by Price, tipped out to Olsen, handoff Graham. Olsen wants a three, can't get it to go. Anderson comes down with that rebound. Pushing. Pushes it across the court, wants to go coast to coast, can he? Oh, He cannot get the ball to fall, but he'll get two shots at the free throw line instead. So sometimes it's, they'll reward you just for being aggressive. That's what happened there. It's usually how it gets sold the most is if you're the ball carrier and you're really pushing it. It's going to go against Andre Knutson, his second personal third team foul against the Braves. Anderson's first shot is up good. and good. Good that. <laughs> Made a free throw. Yeah, we gotta. If we hit the free throws, it's not the game's over at this point. But hey, doing well. Porter and Baker checking back in for the Braves. That's notable to watch for their big free three-point shooters. As Anderson second shot's good. Porter cross timeline. Tries to go all the way. Doesn't oh. fall this time. And Dylan Roberson's going to pick up a foul. It's going to be his first personal 16th foul. Tegan August checking in in place of Jaden Jones. Considering Roberson fouled out at Darrington, it's good to see him only picking up one so far. <laughs> yeah, he usually doesn't get into foul trouble. Baker steps back for a three, wide open off the back iron, no good, rebounded by Cram. Fresh 35 seconds, Cram wants his own three, can't get it to go, just short. Price with that rebound, puts it back up, just short. Nice. Tegan finally comes down with the rebound. Okay, we're gonna wanna milk a little bit of clock because the clock's our friend right now. 44-37, 3.30 left in the game. Four out, one in. Backdoor cut goes Jermaine. August looks for someone to get the ball to. Can't find anyone yet. Finally finds Anderson. Swings it to Jermaine, right wing. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Jermaine penetrates. Jumper from the elbow, fade away. Can't get it to go. Remy with the Good save. Rebound. Kicks it back out to Jermaine. Good it should have been rim. reset. Nope, official right here says to reset the shot clock. Wolverines will get a fresh set under their own basket. Oh no. They're, they're really? The ball Connor. You had one signaling the reset with the spinning finger in the air. So who knows <laughs> at that point, but let's hope it doesn't come back to bite him later. And Tegan's going to pick up his foul. It's gonna be his second personal. 
seventh team foul. Porter to the line to shoot one and one. So those fouls we don't want to pick up this late in the game because mm. you don't want to stop the clock and no. put them on the free and throw I don't line. know if it's his first jitters, but Porter missed both of his first two. Let's see if the pattern continues. It does nice. with Tegan with the rebound. Okay, again, milk the clock. Roberson reset the offense. Anderson, Tegan, skip pass inside to his brother, a little too hard. I like the idea, nothing wrong with it. That's a good pass, good idea. There's, there's nothing it. wrong with it. Yep. I just don't think Remy was prepared for as hard as fast as it was coming in. Right. I kept trying to convince Remy to play football. If he'd have played wide receiver, he'd have caught that. <laughs> you didn't hear it going to be a tic tac -y call, though. Friday Harbor fans letting these officials know as Remy picks up his third personal, sending Baker to the line to shoot one and one. Yeah. yeah, these fouls, we want to make sure we're not picking up unnecessary fouls right now, but they keep missing free throws. That helps. Remy gets the rebound. So far, the pattern is they don't make them, and then the foul -er gets the rebound. And Jaden Jones is back in for the Wolverines as well. Jermaine, over to Remy. Good move. Hooked oh, it, no good, good rebounded by Price. Lucky Jones didn't get his final over the back, that little push back there. Porter, hands off to Cram. Cram penetrates, left corner. Loose ball. Jermaine comes up with it, but he will get a travel. That's the most annoying thing about those travel calls is getting them on the ground. You're right. You see Jermaine hands out, got to contain himself. Gavin Mason checking in in place of Remy August. <laughs> on the floor for the Wolverines is Anderson, Jones, Jermaine, Mason, and Roberson. Your starters versus three of their starters. So seven point game with 155 left now. now uh, Baker right hook and the Connor will take a full timeout with it as a five point game with 152 left. We would like to thank our sponsors super quickly. Thank you to Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center. MEM Enterprises, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Room Insulation. Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and the San Juan Islands Bureau. Okay, here Oof. we go. 152 left, 44-39. Close it out. This cannot go into overtime. It cannot go into overtime. So, yeah, I can't go into overtime because i got to catch the 750 ferry. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Those 32 ounces of Red Bull is finally kicking in. <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> this is our first world problems, right? You have to catch a ferry. I have 32 ounces of Red Bull in me. Tell Mike he's going to be doing the post game. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the quickest post game ever. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. 44, 39, 152 left. Friday Harbor has the ball. Clock is what? Oof, at 152. Wolver Clock's on our side. Oh, is it? Is it though? It, nah, not quite yet. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> not quite yet. Milk the clock. Here we go. Milk the clock as much as you can. Use up all these 35 seconds. You still want to get points off those 35 seconds. For sure. As Wolverines are cutting back door, running a five out, no one in. Mason acting as a rover if needed. They're denying, we're running a little bit of a Nine lead. Nine second, shot clock. Roberson penetrates, low bounce pass uh, to Anderson, can't get it to go. Ty needed to cut to the basket on that one, he had him. Roberson wants it as a tip. Don't think it was tipped. I just don't think he thought Anderson was cutting back door yeah. like he thought he was. If he goes to the hole, he's got to lay Or if he cuts the basket, he's got to lay up there. It's a good idea. Porter to Baker. Outside cram. Porter. Three-pointer for Baker. Can't get it to rebound. go. Good. Roberson comes up with a rebound. Oh. Jones. Oh, not, we don't need tipped. that. It stays with the Wolverines. Friday Harbor wanted a foul, but I don't care at this point as long as you have possession. 
Okay, 33 seconds left on the shot clock. One minute in the game, we're up five. Anderson, right wing, looking for some help. Puts the ball on the ground, picks up his dribble, and a blocking foul against Porter is called. So O'Connor still has some to give. The only difference yeah. is it resets the shot clock for the Wolverines. So that's the did they just call that against Charlie Cram? They didn't. He wasn't anywhere in the area. Interesting. <laughs> Second personal for Cram. Fourth so the, team foul. So the benefit we have is they don't have many team fouls like the first half. That's actually hurt, helping us now. Mason. They're trying to come on and say top foul. Top the horn. Over to Jones. Looking. It's going to be an offensive. Nope, they're going to give that blocking foul against Baker. That's going to be Baker's third personal. Fifth team foul. Coach is just screaming over there. Foul him. There's 42 seconds left. We're down five. You got a foul. Remy August checking in for the Wolverines. Anderson inbounds Mason oh. by himself. Oh. Got to turn and look at the basket, but he's going to pick up a foul. No free throws yet. Foul's going to be called on Charles Baker. His fourth personal. That is a huge foul for LaConnor. Number five, Andre Knutson checking in in place of Baker. Weird because you were saying Baker was our good three-point shooter. I mean, he has four fouls, but we'll see. Yep. Floater pass inside to Anderson. Oh. He is sandwiched. So that's their sixth foul or seventh now? It's going to be their seventh. But there is a 30-second timeout. So no foul. Oh, they didn't call a foul on that? There is no foul. Instead, it was a timeout by Rod before the foul is called. As 40 seconds is on the game clock. We're going to thank some of our sponsors quickly. Thank you to Browns Home Center, the island's only full-service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Serving, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, and Miller Drywall. It's been Oof. a great game. It's been an exciting game. Five-point game. Wolverines are up 44, 39, 40 seconds left. Fresh shot clock. You know LaConnor is going to foul at this point. Yeah, but you kind of really, like you saw in the Darrington game, just play keep away. Right. Move that ball as fast as possible around the horn. And then if you're lucky, they pick up an intentional and foul you if you don't have the ball. Anderson to inbound. You're going to deny. we got two guys open. Inside Mason. Oh. Cram picks up his third personal against Mason. Mason to the line, shooting one and one since it is a seventh team foul. Gavin Mason has been one for three from the free throw line. Tell everybody I screwed up that visual. For Just everyone wondering, keep, it, was, it, was, keep, it was Mike Martin on the video. Keep the camera on the game. <laughs> Mason oh, can't get his free throw to drop. Rebounded by the Braves. Oh, he traveled. Travel is called. Everybody sees it. He knew he got away with it. Cram comes up with a lay-in from the left side. Three-point game. They're going to foul Remy. It's going to come down to free throws. He traveled. They didn't see it. No, they were watching the wrong game. Nice job, Rem. Oh. I mean, if you're wondering why the video is not on the game the whole time, it's because Mike's too busy yelling at these officials. Yeah, that's been happening a lot. Remy August to the line to shoot one and one. Come on, Remy. As Charles Baker has fouled out of the game, their big three-point shooter. Remy's first shot is no good. Oh, Off the back iron, rebound. but rebounded by Jermaine. Jermaine brings it on out, and he is met and fouled. Nice job, Ethan. That was a big rebound. We needed that. Huge rebound. Huge rebound. Resets. There is no shot clock. We are at 20 seconds as the Wolverines are up 44 to 41. Jermaine did the line to shoot one and one. Nine team fouls. We'll hit it. Knew it. That's our, that's our best free throw. 
Yep, Jermaine yep. took the free throws for the intention for the technical at Darrington. Didn't make any of them so far perfect from the line as he is four for four and gives the Wolverines a five point lead, 41 to 46. That's big free throws. It makes the two possession game right there. Porter oh, trying to get it outside to Sidisek. Price steps back, blocked, shot by Mason. Roberson comes up with it. Anderson to Remy August. He will That's pull good. it out. He decides not to take That's it. Good. Two seconds. Stepped out of bounds. Rod says that is okay. Get back. There was 1.7 seconds left. Impossible almost yeah, to win. Over. Cram wants a half court shot, doesn't go. Friday Harbor boys punch their ticket to the postseason with this win over LaConnor. That's a great call. And that basically ends LaConnor's postseason chances. Unless yes, somehow they can pull out a win against Darrington at home next week. Well, I think even with that, they're, that puts them at five losses. They've already lost to Orcas twice. Yeah, they're out. So we're in. Looks like it's going to be Darrington, Friday Harbor, and Orcas are going to be the three representatives for our league. So that's big. That just secures your spot for the playoffs. That is absolutely huge. Both teams only scored 10 points in that fourth quarter. And we are going to go ahead and thank our sponsors super quickly before we talk about this post game. Thank you to Brown's Home Center, the island's only full service building supply center, MEM Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance, and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Waterworks, Lemon Computers, San Juan Serving, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan Islands, Miller Drywall, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, Pacific Rim Insulation. Brian's leaving me. They got a ferry to catch because, like we said, first world problems. Enjoy the victory and tell Kyson congratulations for me. Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, and the San Juan Island Bureau. Thanks so much, Brian, for a great commentary. And you are on vacation again, right? In concrete against the you're on vacation next week, right? You won't be at the concrete game. Yes, yeah, so Brian reminding him that I owe him two burgers for this day. Oh. I know. I just keep ragging him up. I'm sorry, Dad. I just, I can't learn. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess he'll probably get his before my mocha frappuccinos. <laughs> yeah, but burgers are cheaper than your venti mocha frappuccino, one and a half pumps, real shot blended in, no whipped cream. <laughs> well, tell you what, the, the Wolverines, uh, those buckets were not cheap early in the game. Uh, the Wolverines found themselves down by five. Uh, they couldn't seem to hit the bottom of the net for about the first three minutes. Um, then they kind of uh, came alive and, and they, the Wolverines built a nine point lead as, um, as they, they end up uh, winning, uh, what was it, 40? 41 to 46. And their biggest run was 10 points. I think that was the biggest momentum shifter and game changer was that 10-0 run, which also led to their nine-run lead. Nine-run lead, wow, ten, we're baseball ten, season already. Lord bless. <laughs> the 10-run, um, nine-point lead, thank you. There we go. Thank um, you, words are hard. Yeah, well, the, the Wolverines, um, you know, you got to like what Dylan Roberson, um, uh, he, you know, he gave them that bucket right there just before the half. That lay-in was huge. Yeah, and I think that really kind of, um, he's so calm, and, you know, I, I kind of pointed to you and I kind of tapped, you know, he's got ice water running through his veins, and, and he showed it right there. And that's what we kind of come to expect. He had the the big, uh, was it the game winner against Orcas? Or was yes. It, yeah. So uh, Mount Vernon Christian. Mount Vernon Christian. Um, yeah, you might want your phone, Brian. <laughs> nice job. Um, and I think Dylan Robertson was one of those players who came off the bench last season, really as a sixth man, kind of finding his own groove is now a starter this year, has been, I would almost say, the leader of the team. I agree. And 
has definitely put the ball in his hands, the game in his hands when needed, and he ended the night with 14 points, the Wolverines' biggest score. Yeah, and but the, let's talk about the sixth man, um, because that's Kyson Jackson. And when, it is, and it's also Remy August at times. They both kind of yeah. play those different six-man roles. Kyson went in there, gave them some value minutes as a stopper. He went out there on their three-point shooter. When they were starting to um, uncork them, he went out there and he shut them down. And that really um, kind of fueled, I don't know how many points Kyson had. Did he have any? Kyson didn't have any points. He was 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Just kind of talking about scoring super quickly then. Remy August had four. Ty Anderson had six. He was perfect from the free throw line two for two Jaden Jones had one he was one for two from the free throw line Ethan Germain had 11 he was perfect from the free throw line four for four with a tray and two field goals like we said Dylan Roberson with 14 Kenny Halleck with three Gavin Mason with three and Tegan August with four well and then Ethan Germain he had a couple of clutch free throws down the stretch to make it a two possession game um, and that really kind of put it out of, of reach. It was under 10 seconds. It, it was 44 to 41. Easy bank three could tie that game. The but way they were hitting those threes, you never knew what was going to happen. Exactly. You, you know, you saw a couple of those balls that they just threw up. And I was just like, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, maybe this place doubles as a church um, on the weekends. But um, some prayers went answered tonight here in the first half. But the Wolverines answered the bell in the second half. Wolverines come away with a five-point victory, four-point? Five, 41 five. to 46. And that was the, the, the Braves' largest lead was five points, I think. And that came in the first, I think, six minutes. Friday Harbor came out. They were the first ones to score from Dylan Roberson. He put them up 2 nothing super quickly. But that was the only time that Friday Harbor had led in the first half. It wasn't until they kind of came back into the second half and scored made it 25 to 23 that gave them back that lead and I think it was all momentum shifting for them finally getting that lead back getting that confidence back and going back to Dylan Roberson hitting that lay in right before you go into the locker room is huge yeah and I hope uh, everybody sort of appreciates some of the kinks that we've been able to work out throughout the season um I think this was one of our better cinematic efforts. Um, Minus the Kayla, fact that you Kayla, didn't, you, Kayla, no, 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 Kayla brings the heat every, <laughs> no, every time. No. Kayla brings the heat every time. But um, I may or may not have had uh, an error or two. I told them you were big, too. I were told them that you were too busy yelling at the refs to really focus on. You couldn't hear me though. I was quiet as church mouse. Oh, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, you know, the, the Wolverines, the thing that I liked about them is that um, they faced adversity. And that's what you need. And, and I, uh, I think a lot of people may say they were sloppy in the first half or whatever. I like that they faced adversity. And the leadership of Dylan Roberson, the leaders, leadership of Ethan Germain, um, who else? Um, we even saw a lot of the motion from, Rem from Remy August tonight. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the guys that I want to really kind of talk about, Ty Anderson. He had a great game. He had a great game, but the uh, the big guys, Gavin Mason and um, and where is the other one? Tegan August. Tegan August, Biggs. Uh, I was looking for Biggs on there, and I just couldn't. Anyway, Tegan August, that's his nickname is Biggs. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, hey, mm -hmm. am I right? Am I right? I'm not um, going to do that to this point. <laughs> That's his true nickname. He doesn't respond. You say Tegan, he won't respond. Anyway, the oh, big guys. Oh, he will guys, if I yell loud enough. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the big guys underneath, they did a great job uh, getting some uh, tough rebounds, shutting down that middle because I don't know what their guy, he had some uh, some good putbacks, but they when they needed to kind of shut something down that they saw that the other team was doing, that LeConnor was doing, they found a way to shut them down and really kind of kept them off balance. Um, and I, I think the Wolverines, like I said, I liked the adversity because I think that you saw a lot of cooler heads prevail in this game, and that leadership was huge down the stretch. Jaden Jones. Sorry, there's he, another guy. He, yes, he definitely is somebody that stood out a lot to me tonight, too. Overall, I think this was probably one of the most collective games I think I've seen the Wolverines play so far this season. Again, I have only gotten to see about a quarter of them just because I don't go to the home games I didn't make it to the first half of the season and to kind of piggyback off of your adversity and it is something that I had mentioned to Brian and 
bear with me on the name here, but I think Friday Harbor has been the Cinderella story of the league this season. You lose, I would say, collectively three feet of people with Marshall Clark and Kyle Mapstead, Lucas Chevalier. You lose Chase Wilson. Those are four starters that are now being replaced. Ethan Germain is the only comeback starter from this season. They're not a super young team. They're not a super old team. It's kind of right in the middle. And I think a lot of people going into this weren't really worried about Friday Harbor in the sense that it's a rebuilding year. And that's kind of what they were doing. They were working at a brand new offense. It wasn't just a lob pass inside your tall player to turn around and put it up, but having to rework a completely different offense and for them to come out and face that adversity, that is something that they hadn't had to do in previous years with having all that height. And to now lock their ticket in for postseason is huge. And it, uh, does that actually uh, cement their spot in the postseason? It does. LaConnor now sits at five losses. Friday Harbor is still only at three losses. Darrington is at two losses. Orcus is at four losses. Orcus and LaConnor don't play each other anymore, even if LaConnor were to be Darrington next week in the final game of the regular season. It does not matter. All right, Wolverine Sports on Friday Harbor Tiny Radio is presented by Browns Home Center. The island's only full-service building supply center by <laughs> M.E.M. Enterprises, King's Market, San Juan Fitness Center, Star Excavation and Septic, Islanders Bank, San Juan Heating, Geyser Appliance Repair, Farmers Insurance and the Tammy Cotton Agency, Northwest Plumbing and Water Works, uh, Lemon Computers, San Juan Surveying, San Juan Physical Therapy, Better Properties of San Juan's, Miller Drywall, and uh, they have some blowers going on here. Um, anyway, M.E.M. Enterprises, Haley's Bar and Grill, Friday, what have you done to my little... Uh, That's exactly <laughs> how you gave it to me. Uh, Friday Harbor Electric, American Legion, uh, Island Petroleum Services, Purple and Gold Booster Club, and come up with your Purple and Gold uh, player of the girls' game and the boys' game. Um, and Pacific Rim Insulation, Friday Harbor Dentistry, Island Home Finishes, uh, Aeronautical Services, Chicago Title, Blue Water Bar and Grill, Tony's Carpet Care, San Juan Island Visitors Bureau. Without them, uh, today's broadcast was not possible. And uh, make sure you, you stop by and thank everybody because we couldn't be doing this without them. Yeah, go out, support your local businesses, support these sponsors, whether it's just to say thank you or even actually support them. It doesn't matter because they are supporting these athletes and this broadcast and my purple and gold booster club player of the game for the girls is going to be Stella Parsons. She comes off the bench. She had outstanding rebounds. She has a bucket. She has a free throw on the night. Just definitely how much that changes the momentum and kind of keeping her head in it and even playing so hard even though they're down by so much and it's a running clock kind of right away going into the second half that kind of mentality I think means more to me than somebody who were to put up 22 points yeah uh, yeah she, she brought in some toughness in the middle not that yeah. Bailey Lambright didn't have it but Bailey got into some foul trouble and yeah she contributed some some exactly. valuable minutes I think they actually probably end up splitting uh, the time down yeah. uh, in the paint. I, I definitely agree with you, especially because Bailey picks up her third personal with four minutes left in the sec in the first half, so that's quite a ways to sit. And then for the boys, I am going to go, oof, I want to say Dylan Roberson because of how much heart and all of his points he had, but I'm going to say Ethan Germain, those free throws at the end are clutch. He, had a, his, he was constantly running and pushing it, pushing the ball, rebounding, just kind of really getting everywhere sliding on the ground you know it goes over as a travel but the fact that you're still getting on the ground for that loose ball it, it means a lot yeah and, and the, the scrappiness exactly you got to have the scrappers that are out there um you know and, and yeah i think that was a uh you know a big thing right there showing a lot of heart uh pretty much from from everybody on the team this was a total team effort everybody really that went was. in um, they they filled their role they did their, their, what they were supposed to do and the Wolverines come away on a Friday night in La Conner with a five-point victory exactly and don't go anywhere because we still have one more regular season game coming up as we will be down in concrete on Tuesday with the boys and girls game girls can win and also secure a postseason appearance boys are already there but can still get another victory as both concrete teams are 0 and 8 in league so should be some great games for wolverines to wrap up their regular season uh, it will be kayla olin and 
and uh, Sam uh, Paul Barrett with the color and the play-by-play, -play. Kayla with the play-by-play -play, um, from Concrete next Tuesday. Uh, thank you for tuning in uh, or you know it, five years later if you're watching this uh, kind of looking back at your senior year great job tonight Gavin um, great job Tegan so that's the beautiful thing about these I Kayla. thought his name's not Tegan <laughs> no, okay <laughs> Done. and with that uh, maybe I'll take one of your mocha frappuccinos off of your debt <laughs> kick a Wolverine all right uh, final score 46 to 41 that's it for us, Friday Harper Tanya Radio, presented by Browns Home Center, the island's only full-service building supply center, and MEM Enterprises. And that's a wrap. We're out.